Welcome wonderful women, welcome back to Nourished by Claudia. For all of you that are new here, my name is Claudia, I'm a nutrition and dietetic clinician by trade and I work with women that suffer from hypothalamic amenorrhea, irregular periods, infertility and disorder behaviors around food and training. If you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, just make sure that you hit the button below so every single week you're going to receive free resources on how to support your hormones, how to get the period back and how to conceive if that's your dream for the year. Today I'm going to share the five tips that have helped plenty of my clients and myself to get the period back but not only that to maintain very regular pain-free periods so without further ado i would like to jump on my first tip which is reducing your caffeine intake especially in the morning and some of you right now may also think well claudia we have heard that before and you also may be rolling your eyes because who doesn't love a cup of warm coffee in the morning especially when it's cold and dark outside but the reality is that caffeine disrupts the absorption of some of the minerals and nutrients that are super important to get your hormones back on track not to mention that if you're pairing your caffeine with some breakfast it's going to reduce the absorption of iron zinc and magnesium and these three elements are once again very important to support and restore your hormones if instead you love to have your coffee on a fast stomach and you like to have it before a workout chances are that you're going to increase your cortisol level. And if you have been suffering from hypothalamic amenorrhea, and if you have been trying to have a baby without success for quite an extended period of time, chances are that your cortisol level is way too high and we need to find a way to decrease that. So there are a few tips that I love to give to my wonderful women. The first one is to start the day with a decaf coffee. And trust me, especially if you love a milky coffee, but sometimes even a dark coffee, you cannot tell the difference between the decaf coffee and the real coffee. Yes, there is the placebo effect that make you feel more alert, but the reality is that it's decaf can be so much better for your hormonal health. Something else that you can try is also dandelion tea or chicory coffee. They are incredible substitutes and they contain lots of prebiotics. And for all of the Australians that are watching me today, there is an incredible brand which is called Non-Coffee Coffee that offers a great replacement for your cup of coffee. So let's see if you can try any of these tips and let me know how you feel after doing so. The second thing that has really worked for me and so many of my clients is to have breakfast in the morning no matter what. It doesn't matter if you're training, it doesn't matter if you have to run out of the door, it doesn't matter if you wake up too early and you cannot stomach breakfast. The reality is that breaking that fast it's really important when you're trying to get your period back. If you don't have a huge appetite in the morning, fear not. There are so many things that we can do to actually increase uh, that appetite in the morning. But normally the rules is to have breakfast within 90 minutes from waking. And if you love to train in the morning, then I will say start by substituting your coffee with something that is caffeine free. Have a snack go for your training and then come back and have a proper breakfast. And when I talk about breakfast, I'm not talking about a muesli bar. I'm talking about a combination between protein, fats and healthy carbohydrates, low GI carbohydrates as often as possible, plus lots of nuts and seeds just for added nutrients and uh, minerals and vitamins. Tip number three that I would like to share today is to welcome intuitive eating with a dash of planning. So I know that for some of you, especially if you have been following uh, strict food rules for a long, long time, the idea of eating intuitively is like a paradise. You can wake up in the morning and eat exactly when you want and what you want. That feels so fantastic. But the reality is that if you don't have a period and if you have a past history of disorder behaviors around food and training, I highly recommend to stick to a routine and to stick to a plan, wait for your period to come back and then start experimenting with intuitive eating. Also, after you get your period back, I always say, yes, absolutely, welcome intuition when it comes to resting, when it comes to training and when it comes to eating, but make sure that you're planning that in advance. For example, if you know that you're gonna have a couple of back-to-back -back meetings between 12 o'clock and three o'clock in the afternoon, don't be unprepared, don't have just your breakfast and a small snack 
10 o'clock and then nothing until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's gonna make you feel very jittery, anxious, it's gonna make you lose concentration, it's gonna decrease your performance and you're not gonna feel very great afterwards. And chances are that you're gonna overeat after the meeting is over or that you're gonna feel very poorly for the rest of the day. So yes, welcome intuitive eating, but as I said before, with a dash of planning, depending on your current situation. Obviously, all the tips that I'm giving today, they are very generic, they're not specific to your current situation because chances are that I haven't met you yet. But if you would like to keep receiving this type of tips, make sure that you subscribe by clicking on the button below. One, two more things that I would like to add. One is to add protein with your meals. I was vegan for a long time. I was vegetarian for 15 years and I never prioritized protein. And uh, unfortunately, the research is very clear. If you want to have healthy hormones, if you want to balance your blood sugar level, if you want to protect your bone health, you need to have proteins with your main meals. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, aim to have approximately between 25 to 30 grams of protein with your three main meals and allow some room to add extra protein throughout the day. Then obviously the protein intake changes based on your agenda, uh, your age, uh, your protein requirements, based on the type of food that you eat and based on the training that you do and the person that you are and the state of your overall health. But just as a ballpark figure, aim to have somewhere between 20 to 30 grams of proteins at least three times a day and that should cover it pretty much. And the last thing that I would like to add is to really be mindful of the amount of alcohol that you drink and how you feel after drinking alcohol. I've seen lots of women that didn't have the period and they used to binge drink you know, over the weekend. So chances are that in that case, alcohol was not really doing any, any good for them. So look at your drinking habits and ask yourself, how do I feel the day after? How do I feel after having a couple of glasses of wine or a couple of beers? How do I feel after having a vodka? Do I start feeling lightheaded right away? And do I feel like I have an hangover the next day? Do I feel hungrier the next day? Do I feel not hungry at all while I'm drinking? These are all very important questions that you need to ask yourself to understand if your relationship with alcohol is impacting um, is impacting your chances of ha getting your period back and also having regular pain-free periods. If you are in the preconception phase, my general rule, a blanket rule, I shall say, is to avoid drinking alcohol for approximately 120 days before you conceive because that's the amount of time that it takes for the sperm and the egg to really become healthy and ready to be fertilized. Um, but obviously these situations may really vary depending on the person that you are. And now if you got to this video, to the last tip of my video, I would like to add a couple of bonus tips. The first one is to accept that walking is cardio. Lots of women that love doing interval training, strength training, um, jogging and spinning just to increase their cardio output. But the reality is that walking, if you don't have a period and also if you're trying to get pregnant, can be your only form of cardio because walking can be cardio. And the last thing that I would like to say is to prioritize your sleep. Sleep is more important than going to the gym, is more important than many other things that are currently happening in your life. And also prioritize your strength. And your strength, yes, can be like strength training, like going to the gym or being at home and lifting some weight, but it can also show in different areas of your life. And I'm talking about physical resilience, but also mental resilience. For all of you that got to this point of the video, I would like to thank you so much for being here. I appreciate each one of you. Please subscribe to this channel so that I can keep making these wonderful videos for all of you. And if you have any questions, please make sure that you comment below and if you want to join us on the period comeback protocol make sure that you click the link below and book a call with me bye for now